just to give you some background, it was commissioned in 2008 by Baldacci's administration and $60,000 was paid to Judy Taylor to create a mural that emphasized the value and dignity of workers and their critical role in creating the wealth of the state and the nation. <laughs> when I first saw the call for artists, I said, this is, this is my gig. I got to... I got to get this job. This is what I studied for. This is what I went for. And um, I was thrilled to receive it. And I worked all year in the studio. And the, Charlie, um, thank God for email. Uh, he was my instructor and my mentor throughout the whole process. And the women of the Labor Department were fantastic to work for. And I hope you go see the mural. And another lesson that I learned from a teacher of mine when I studied a piece of artwork when I would go to a museum, rather than try to see everything, I would sit with one painting and would imagine that I was the painter of that painting. This helped teach me technique, and this also helped me teach me something else about getting involved with the painting. And I ask, if you do go to Augusta, just to sit with the mural and kind of walk with the people that I put in, in, the, in the panel. Thank you very much. It was contracted uh, under Baldacci, so under a Democratic uh, governor, and Judy Taylor won the commission through the Arts Commission, Main Arts Commission, signed a contract with them. The idea was to portray the history of Maine labor. Um, and she did, a, I think it was like 36 feet or 11 panels, and it went kind of chronologically. And it included things like Rosie the Riveter, who came out of BIW. She worked there. And it had the strike, the shoe strikes, and it had, you know, and it had all the important pieces. And she had done a lot of research with that wonderful, wonderful guy who teaches up at Orono. It wasn't at all, not at all controversial to look at. It just was very inclusive. So here comes LePage and his first major decision within, I think, a month or two of becoming governor, take this down out of the Department of Labor, which is where it hung and where it was commissioned for, and, you know, a special place that was, it was made to go around this room, and to hide it, you know, remove it. And his thinking was that this was not conducive to getting businesses to come to Maine, you know, to have something sympathetic to, the, to labor. So here he's not just censoring an artist, not just censoring um, an artist contract that she had to do this, you know, to overriding this contract, but he's censoring history. That's, that's, made, that's our history. So artists as an artist, hearing about this, we just came to the fore, you know, like, we, we were there before anybody else to, to complain, you know, to say, wait, you can't do this. And so we immediately contacted the labor union and, um, oh, the, the lawsuit was filed on behalf of three of us artists, a workplace safety official, an organized labor representative, and an attorney alleging that LePage violated First Amendment rights protected in the U.S. Constitution, as well as the state's contract with the artist. Yes, and I was one of the, the main organizers of the press conference and the rally because it was, a, it was an artistic issue. I was especially interested because I knew a lot of labor history in the state, having done a lot of murals, especially in Lewiston, Auburn, and uh, Rob Shetterly. And then we had a few poets, and Dave Mallett came and played music, and Dave Dodson came and sang. And one of the people who worked there said it was the biggest rally they'd ever seen. It was electric. There were so many artists who came out, and it took about a year to go through the courts. And Judge Woodcock up in Bangor, federal district judge, ruled against us. He ruled that this was governor, government speech, 91-page ruling. <laughs> we, we, were, we were calling it government censorship of artistic speech in violation of the First Amendment. That was our case. But LePage won. He called the mural one-sided and said he didn't want to send the wrong message to employers in Maine. 
it prompted widespread criticism around the country. It was a national issue. Um, and our plaintiff said after we lost, well, we won the case in the court of public opinion. <laughs> but, that's, but we didn't win. We didn't win. Because, I mean, here we are. We have all these cases now, free speech issues against, you know, that are helping prop up the, the white racist and the xenophobes and the homophobes. And, and uh, so even though the public and the artists and, you know, people believe in free speech, it's, it seems we're losing a lot.